I'm telling a friend like a champ. You can always reach us at Food Bar Show. That's FWOBarshow.com. And FWOBarshow is our handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. You can check us out, drop us a line, and we'll foo it up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, foo? See, foo. All right. Today, we have Crystal Basica. Say hello, Crystal. Hello. And Steph. What's up, my dudes? Hi, Crystal. Hi, Steph. <laughs> hello. Hey, guys. Um, Crystal is a friend of mine that, what, I've known you for, what, a couple of years now? Yeah. Known you for a couple of years. Met you through Jimmy, who's the uh, lead singer of the band that I'm in, The Fallen Electric. You've done a lot to boost up The Fallen Electric in the two years that I've known you, and probably before that. Uh, Crystal plays a huge part in the fucking band because not only is she kind of just there for us morally and she's an awesome person because of it. In a way, you and your dad have mentored Jimmy a little bit uh, it, yes. to, for him to become more of more grow into his musicianship. Uh, on top of that, uh, you you were also uh, a writer of one of, of some of the songs, a handful of those songs that are in our album, Never Seen the World. I have. Yeah, in fact, if you own a uh, one of our albums, you'll see an album credit on there. But food, does anybody ever own those albums? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> you sold a lot of albums. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just giving yeah, you So shit. for the two guys in fucking Rancho Cucamonga <laughs> who uh, have our album... <laughs> If you're, and, and, and listen to the podcast. Oh, I'm really oh, narrowing oh, it down oh, now. Wow. If I wasn't filtering wow. it out before. <laughs> really put them in a corner, eh? Very specific. Uh, yeah, uh, you've done a lot. So, like, tell me, how did that, uh, how did you come to meet Jimmy? How many years have you known him? All that shit. Known Jimmy probably, hmm, um, I don't even know how many years now, 10 plus. Uh-huh. He actually, his sister found us. All right. Uh, they were walking around in downtown Upland, and we were playing at what was at that point Baldy Brewery. And it's the bar next door to JD's. Um, oh. What is it? Second uh, Avenue Saloon now? Oh, interesting. Okay. It used to be Baldy Brewery. In Upland. Yeah. Yeah. 90 Proof was playing there. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even. And that's your band, which we'll yes. discuss in a bit. Wasn't even officially in 90 Proof. I was just singing, like, on a break. They asked me to get up and sing with my dad. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we were doing Heart Shape Box. Oh, oh right, right on. And. Jimmy tells the story is like, is that a chick singing? (laughs) You know, he hears Nirvana and comes running. Yeah. So they come up to see what's going on (laughs) and they stayed and that's how they met 90 Proof. So Jimmy has this crazy enthusiasm about him at all times. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And that's what draws me to Jimmy because I'm like, what is this? What is the fucking cartoon happening in this guy's mind 24 hours a day, seven days a week? It's He's the like best puppy. part about I, I Jimmy, love, though. I love Jimmy for that. He looks at everything with child eyes. <laughs> yes, and very with much. With wonder and right. excitement. He's a, yes. he's, a good, he's a good human being, that Jimmy. So <laughs> they came, started following Talking us. like he's dead. <laughs> right? <laughs> that Jimmy once was a nice guy. <laughs> All right. Oh, Jimmy, old oh boy. <laughs> Solid man, that Jimmy. <laughs> he will be missed. <laughs> He'll be missed. At least until Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they came to see us, and then they started following us around. And then as years went on, we heard Jimmy had a band going. And this was, they had just become the Fallen Electric when he finally told us about it. They, he had changed the name He had to changed that. the name, okay. yeah. So this was post-Nobodies, and, you know. Right. So. <laughs> the band's name was called the Nobodies, <laughs> which is funny that he that he did that because every time I try to like make him feel better about a situation, I'm like, don't worry about it, man. We're, we're still a bunch of nobodies. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Enjoy it while it lasts. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, yeah, I guess he just gets over it. (laughs) So he had mentioned to the band, Hey, my band's playing, you know, be cool. Mm -hmm. If you guys could come, he never in a million years thought anyone would show up. So my whole band like looked at me and said, I have to work. Greg was, doing sound at a church at that point or whatever, mm-hmm. they're like, can you go see Jimmy's band play? Because he comes to see all of our shows, and we just, can you represent? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure, no problem, whatever. It was in downtown Pomona mm-hmm. at Aladdin Jr. at the time, back in the day. <laughs> and Aladdin it was a $10 Jr. cover to get in, and I'm like, this is bullshit. I don't even know that they're asking me what band I'm here to see. <laughs> I had no idea what the name of his band is. Oh, well, who sorry, are you here to see? Jimmy. Jimmy what? No fucking idea what his last name is. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here to see a band. You didn't look at his MySpace song. and figure it out like so, we all would have done? And I was late getting there, too. And I, I'm texting Greg. I'm like, look. I didn't even have Jimmy's number or anything at that mm-hmm. point. And I text Greg. I'm like, look. I think they already went on. They're supposed to start at 6. I'm like, I'm down here already. I'm going to go check out a, mu- a museum down the way that I know the people. 
So I walked down there, texted Greg. He texted Jimmy in the meantime and found out that they hadn't gone on yet. And this is the name of the band. And go in the back door. Don't pay $10. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went over there. And that's where I saw them play. And I was like, huh, these songs are actually like good. They're not bad. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah. And then they played Down for the Floor. And I was like. Oh, uh, Local H. Okay. Yeah. And I recorded it for so I could show the guys. I'm like, look, they're actually like good. We should go next right. time, you know? Right. <laughs> and then come to find out like that was the only gig they did for like for a while. Ever. Oh. <laughs> for like oh. six months. And they so talked about this gig like, Was Drew uh the, his bassist by then? Drew was the okay. bassist. Yeah. So they just had a different drummer at that a time. Different drummer, John, yeah. Got it. Okay. So that was like in I don't know, September or October. And then in January, Jimmy's dad passed away. Oh. Mm-hmm. And um, Jimmy was devastated, of course, yeah. and was like, I don't want to do this anymore. The music was mine and my dad's thing. And I'm like, oh, hell no, not on my watch. <laughs> and me and my dad are like, no, like, you're not quitting this because something awful happened. You know, right. we'll get through this. So not knowing what do you do when somebody dies? Like, you know, you, no one knows what to do. And yeah, most time people everybody retreat. says you're yeah. sorry and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we had him come over to my dad's studio in the garage which is what Jimmy designed his studio after. Right. So we would just have him come over and play music. And mm-hmm. the music like kind of got him through all that and made him snap out of it. And I'm like, do you guys want to play? Like, you know, we should practice. And I'll book a couple shows for you, help you book a couple shows mm-hmm. and, you know, get you guys out there and making money. Mm-hmm. And I was telling you, you're not doing this pay to play anymore. No more this yeah. $10 at the door and you don't get any of it. This podcast is very opposed to pay to play. Yep. Yeah, it's so. awful. <laughs> and I don't agree with yeah. it at all. And we don't... It's- the only bullshit. time we do something yeah. for free is typically if we're supporting someone else, like because they're trying to get something off the ground, yeah, or it's a charity event, mm-hmm. and those are and the you t- know that the money's going to the charity, right? Yeah, we've for done sure. we've done like a relay for life kind of thing mm-hmm. or something like that. But other than that, you know, you get paid to play. It's right. it's work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I taught him that, and then I was also simultaneously taking him out to see other bands play, mm-hmm. local bands like Groove Session and people that I know that have done this successfully Building and I'm like network up at the same time watch what they're doing right see how there's no breaks between songs see how it keeps moving and just kind of showed them mm-hmm. you know all that kind of stuff and you know somebody's gonna make it sound really good like it's a great thing as how much are we getting paid or we're not doing it and it cut out a lot of the years that bands go through that of yeah learning that stuff mm-hmm. so he kind of got ahead of the game a little bit from our knowledge from doing it for so many years yeah no and that's great um uh or else you know right now we'd probably be doing some stupid pay to play or maybe i at this point i don't think i'd be in the band <laughs> if it was about the pay to play right um, and i mean and there's a time and a place i get you know it's gonna happen. very unique situations where it wasn't about you handing over a wad of cash to the promoter that night right. uh so that and then he still makes you sell unreasonably amount of tickets exactly so so yeah that's awesome and um and the fact that you know he kind of came up to speed with you know the the scene the rock scene at least the local rock scene there developing his network which he still uses to this day by and large and 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 just just stepping in like when i stepped in what what was going through your head at that time well initially before i kind of said you know you guys sound good as a Mm three-piece you know the less people the less people you got to pay right so you know there's that but i understood he was it's a lot to Mm -hmm. it's a lot for me to sing all night my band we don't sing all night we rotate there's three of us singing so nobody's singing for four hours it's a lot Mm -hmm. and i knew he was doing that and then i was kind of like if it's the right person then yeah but if it's someone that's going to come in and I don't know, I didn't know what I was expecting. And he's like, I wish I could find someone that was like your dad, but, you know, obviously not 65 years old yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, totally. and able to, to tour and do the things that he has the vision, for, you know, for the band to head in that direction. And then here you are. Okay. He, call, he, actually, <laughs> he actually calls you Mini Michael. <laughs> Mini <laughs> Michael. I like Mini Michael. Because you're a badass guitar player, and then you have that same dry sense of humor, and it's, uh-huh. yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for, um, it, it was weird uh, because, it, and, the, and part of the reason why I'm here and why Jimmy contacted me, or at least was instrumental in contacting me, is because of Josh right here. I, have you uh, heard this story, Chris? I don't know this story. Oh, you don't? So uh, okay. go ahead and tell him, Josh, what um, happened. So I had hired. Josie's then band, uh, the hotline, the hotline. And for to play my brother's uh, engagement party. 
I didn't know about this party. It yes. was your party. It was yes. And he ditched my gig to go to this party and <laughs> yes. play with you guys. Because I, I needed another band, so he had Jimmy and and the Fallen Electric. I knew Travis. Open. I, I knew Travis uh, because he was in another band called Twenty Two Salute at that yeah. time, uh, and them and uh, the Hotline had played a few shows together. Yeah, so I I enjoy the Fallen Electric very you know very much. Like everyone there, like they really enjoyed them, and you know a little before then. You know, we were all having our little doubts about the hotline, and we had voiced our concerns to uh, Josie over here. And so then uh, I was very drunk, very drunk by that time, <laughs> mind you. Uh, I follow Travis and Jimmy outside to the front, and I remember telling Travis, cause, actually, no, I was smoking a cigarette out front with my aunt, and J- Travis came by to me, said, Thanks for having us over. I'm like, Dude, you need to take Josie, you need to take him. And he's like, but he's in the hotline, man. I'm like, nah, dude, they suck. They suck. Nah, you need, you need to take him. And, and that's what he came and told me. He's like, there's this guy, but he's in another band, and I don't want to, like, break up another band over, like, stealing somebody's guitar right. player. But that's not even the best part, Crystal, because I said this as the funnel electric, or the, as the hotline was taking all their stuff from their cars, walking past me. <laughs> oh yeah. So I think awful. Tom, I think Tom, uh, the bassist for the hotline, her, yeah. overheard me. Yeah. And so, along with Brian, and they're just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> I think a little after they just kind of shrugged, like, "Oh well." Yeah. They're cool <laughs> guys. I mean, they they they're they're very they they understand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, well, I was already kind of voicing my um, displeasure. displeasure with with the drummer at the time in the hotline about he 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 was just uh, not an easy guy to work with creatively. Um, Are any drummers? Well, except for Richie. Richie's the exception. Richie's okay. Yeah, Richie. Will, <laughs> Richie will do. He'll yeah. just roll over and say, "Okay, okay, <laughs> you're right, R- Richie." <laughs> Richie's answer to, hey man, can you go play a show uh, on this date? He's like, is there a beer? He's like, yes. Is it free? Of course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's like, really? That's the ticket. That's, 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 that's the, the ticket. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. Since then, you've you've uh, helped us uh, throw this last album out. You helped Jimmy with the copywriting of the, of the song. Well, yeah, in us hanging uh, out, we you're, started. You're like our admin assistant. We started <laughs> writing together, together, and he just he trusts my opinion. Can you take some I minutes get. on this podcast right now? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, if you could. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I'm also your uh, merch designer too. <laughs> yes, I was going to get to that. I'm not I'm not a complete dick, Crystal. I do. Crystal, I do, uh, <laughs> Crystal do you want to be our manager i have a a multitude of of yes crystal um if if anybody well i wear it at shows too um crystal has made these cool necklaces and some bracelets or earrings earrings. Earrings. i'm gonna make bracelets it's on the to-do list yeah that'd be dope uh but it's uh like what kind of material is it so i had these printed where is it at here it is Mm mm-hmm I had these printed with your logo on it. Right. They're laser etched. They're like coins. Stainless steel charms that have the logo for Mm. for TFE on it. And then the stone that I put on all of them, this blue stone, which, you know, Jimmy and his blue guitar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He, um, he loves this color. So it was pretty easy to pick which stone to put on it. Mm -hmm. And it also, this is kyanite is the name of the stone. Yeah. And what it promotes is positivity and optimism, which... Everybody could use a little bit of that. Yeah. So it's a good little dose. It's no nice wonder that, you're sickeningly you're positive so when happy. you have that necklace on. <laughs> <laughs> Sickeningly? Sickening. Sickeningly. Yes, yeah, sickeningly. It's a hard word. <laughs> it is. Words are hard, <laughs> aren't they? Um, yeah. Uh, so, and, and then a little peace sign. Mine has a little peace sign on yeah, it. Yeah, it did them different. Some with peace signs. Some. He asked me to get, um, he wanted infinity symbols. So, I'm oh, okay. making up some more that have right those on. on them. I was thinking those would be cool on the bracelets, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, why couldn't you be cooler with an infinity symbol, man? I'm uh, not that cool, man. Uh, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I actually held back from making jewelry. I told him, I'm like, I'm not making you jewelry because he was asking me for a long time to make some jewelry uh-huh. for the merch. I'm like, uh-uh, not till the album's done. Okay. <laughs> and I held out. I'm like, this thing has to go to print. And we kept losing drummer after drummer and it was like... <laughs> and we've just recently lost another You guys have <laughs> turned into like the red hot chili peppers of... <laughs> <laughs> no like, fucking uh, like how they are no. with guitar players. Uh, spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. Yeah. yeah, spin- yeah. <laughs> oh, Richie's spinal just all. Well, that's what Spinal Tap makes. 